So, what's this Pulitzer bait you have for me? You know that Congressman Sinclair has been sitting on House appropriations. He's also two days away from being sworn in as Speaker. Can I fucking finish? What you don't know is that Sinclair's also been appropriating his own slush fund on the side. Anything else to add to that? A jaded yuppie's word doesn't qualify for a Pulitzer. In fact, it doesn't even qualify for a story. Documented correspondence, raw account summaries, undoctored appropriations contracts. How's that for a Pulitzer, you condescending cunt? Why are you doing this? You said it yourself. I'm a jaded yuppie, and our political system's full of shit. You're full of shit. I've known you all my fucking life, so let me tell you what it is. You didn't get the promotion you were clamoring for, and you can't fucking stomach it. So, you're sticking it to your boss and calling it whistleblowing. Most people are motivated by money, power. I'm no exception. You? You're an anomaly. You're motivated by spite. Which is the finest currency. All politics is, is show business for ugly people. It's a business in which every move is calculated. And if you're not fast enough to become privy to the point, then you have no business being in this business. One of those little shit scrubbers back there leaked appropriations contracts to some faggot reporter at the Times. What exactly is the damage? Well, as you know, Sinclair's gunning for the Oval in three years' time from now. He's going to be funding his campaign through appropriations, and now this faggot reporter is going to extort us for $250 million to withhold the story. $250 mil? Better fucking believe it. That's why I called you out, Quinn. I'm promoting you. Deputy Press Secretary, I want you to spearhead the Ad Hoc Oversight Committee. You want me in charge of ferreting out the mole? Okay. Here's the fucking deal. I am not accustomed to being fucked over. I'm the one who does the fucking over. In fact, I'm the fucker over, not the fuck over. Because the fuck over gets what? Fucked over. And at this important juncture, I am being what you would call fucked over. <clears throat> okay. We pay it forward. Deposit 250 from the slush fund. There's no permanent... Trey, Trey, I'm going to stop you there because what you're suggesting is fucking me over. We humor this asshole reporter. He's still going to go to print. That's how they work. We pay them off, they still publish. So we just root out the mole. We root out the reporter. The fuck is this, Reed? Bring your daughter to work day? This is Quinn Rowan. She happens to be our finest peer analyst, and I've promoted her to deputy press secretary. So you two are fucking. No. That's disgusting. Unnecessary. I... Look, I don't give a shit who fucks who as long as I'm not the one getting fucked. So we root out the reporter. We reach out to all of our contacts from the Times. I know how this is going to sound, but we tip more reporters off about the sludge fund. What? We tip them off so that we can defuse any and all leverage our extortionists have. We'd smack her in the mouth. They'll come up with nothing. The only one who knows about the unfettered contracts is our extortionist, who won't share the spoils because, as we all well know, he's an opportunist prick. He thinks he's the only one with a leg up. But when he finds out that others have been tipped they off... reach out to the mole out of indignation. If we find the journalists, we find the mole. We burn them both. For something that made no fucking sense, it makes sense. PR! You're working for me now. The Times are to be made aware of the probable corruption charges in our congressional district. Francis, maintain the bureaucracy. As I've said before, the request takes three to four business days to process, plus the grace period. Sam, handle legal. Jack fucking shit. If your hack writer really had something substantial, quid pro quo wouldn't be part of this conversation. In fact, we wouldn't even be having this fucking conversation. Morgan, you don't know shit. I don't know shit. Sinclair's office in 15. Did you eat yet? 
Could use a smoke, though. Well, 15 minutes is plenty. Take a load off. Greta Hofstad at the Times. You dirty motherfucker. 250 mil, are you fucking kidding me? So I'm skimming some off the top while I'm at it. Who gives a shit? Skimming. What we talked about last night, deal's off. You strike it from the record. You're fucking traitor without a homeland. First you sell out your own, and now you're selling out your only fucking ally. You want to talk about selling out? Only one of us is cashing in here. I'm taking the story and the raise whether you like it or not. I will burn you. You fucking hear me? My superiors may not know who you are, but I do. And when they find out, you're going to be the front page story on your own fucking paper. You burn me, you burn yourself. How do you think it's going to look when they find out that the author of the nation's top news story has a little sister working PR for the Chud Sinclair? You cunt of a fuck. You fucking kid. You have nothing. This is a press game, and I am the press. You're just an analyst. You're talking to the deputy now, bitch. So why don't you take that to print and just go fuck yourself? New plan of action. My contact over at the Times happens to be a page editor. Now, this particular page editor is close to our reporter. Quinn and I, we're gonna meet with this editor. We're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna make them aware that their writer is extorting us. Two, we're gonna use that fact as leverage. I think a journalist would be the first to show. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you forget to drop the word deadline as bait. Sorry I'm late. No problem. This is my deputy press secretary. Quinn Rowan. Greta Hofstadt. Pleasure. So, if my understanding serves me correctly, you think my writer's moonlighting as an extortionist. No. This is not a matter of thought. This is a matter of fact. Blackmail by email. Under the condition of anonymity, which means you have nothing. If you truly believe we had nothing, you wouldn't even be here. Yet you're playing host to a meeting you claim need not exist. Many things in this world need not exist, yet look at you. Quinn, cool it. Keep talking like you have something. It only tells me you have nothing. How did you know the extortionists operated under the condition of anonymity? We never discussed that. Same way I know how the mole operates. Wait a minute. What are you telling us here? You saying you know who the mole is? You want to talk? Let's talk quid pro quo. <sighs> okay. How about this? We give you another tip, and in exchange, you give us the mole. That'll depend on the tip. That'll depend on the mole. It would depend on the mole, wouldn't it? Service. Then tip. You might want to look into the Congressional Budget Office. Let's just say that some of the figures in municipalities don't quite round out. Now tell us who the fucking mole is. As an editor, I stand to protect my writer. You are fucking kidding me right now. I hold ethics in high regard. I want that tip back. You fucking hear me? How am I supposed to do that exactly? I can't simply unhear what I hear. You're gonna have to kill me. Oh, believe me, this is not above us. Is that a threat? Yeah, it is. Who the fuck gives a shit anyway? I have you on tape. Shit. They now have two leads. You went out with the intention of disarming the enemy. And they end up with double the firepower which was not ours to give in the first place? Get the fuck out. You're fired. Pants, you're promoted to press secretary. What a major fuck over. You have to resign. The point is to save my nomination. The point is to save your career. We're past the point of pre-damage control. Story's landing first thing in the morning. You need to step down before they hit you. Minimize the damage. Lay low for a few years, you can still rise politically. But if you let them take you down now, as speaker, 
That's all anyone's ever gonna remember you for, the speaker who fell the day he rose. Okay, so how do we approach this? Start drafting a notice resignation. Have it sent in by midnight. You're not gonna believe this. There's our reporter. Bitch won't ever publish again. But how? Turns out she's a veteran of this sort of thing. Been picking off her subjects for years. Lobbyists, advocacy firms, closet case politicians, the whole gamut. Someone close to her must have leaked something to the press. What, what about the resignation? It already went through. Let me get this straight. If we had done nothing, nothing would have happened. But instead, we did everything, and every fucking thing happened. Hit the phones. Call 911. No. Call the press, you fucking shitheel. The Tribune, line two. No, no, Congressman Sinclair did not submit the resignation himself. It was forged by disgruntled press secretary. The Herald, on four. I'm the press secretary. Not, not me. I'm the new one, our former press secretary who is now fired. I, I am not disgruntled. Yes, the other disgruntled press secretary. Press briefing in five. Open with the nomination and close with the nomination. Divert any and all mention of the resignation fiasco. Sometimes I feel you guys work harder than I do. My job is just to make you look good. That's all there is to it. And how do I look? You look good. Congressman, they're ready for you. Just yesterday, you stood where I stand. And yet, here you are, 10 years ahead of where I stand within a day's time. I don't understand this business. It's a business in which every move is calculated. And if you're not fast enough to become privy to the point, then get the fuck out. <laughs>